Hey folks, it's Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and Kayak and we are here in Oxtung Lake, Ontario to show you our beautiful Cruiser 16.8 pack boat. And let's go over the details of it and we're going to start with the design. It's been designed by David Yost, genius designer. It is a modified race boat from the old Sawyer DY Special, the Sawyer Shockwave. This boat is more rounded in the chine area than a conventional race boat. And it's got a shallow arch bottom. So it's really good in wind and waves. The waves will roll underneath it with less effect of pushing it around. A conventional race boat is gonna be a better, a faster in real shallow water. This is more of an all around touring boat that's really good in a variety of conditions. There's a little bit more rocker forward also so you can get the boat to really maneuver in a windy, twisty stream. And we did this, mm. folks, because this boat sells to everybody. We have parents buy this boat that want to put a child or a dog in the front of the canoe. I love it because I can put a hundred pounds of gear in it. I can really load it up when I go in and out of my camp that is boat access. It's a beautiful shape and you'll notice what's real distinct about it. We call this an S gunnel where the gunnels have an inward bend right here and that makes it when you're paddling, your hand comes right along the side and you don't have to reach as far over the side when you're paddling the boat. This boat is an absolute joy to paddle. So let's go over some other features. They come standard with the carbon Kevlar trim and it, actually the new version is a black and gold texture. The carbon end caps with the hole drilled in the end to let the water drain out of them. This one has an optional red bottom and it's also got the color skid plates on the canoe. And so everyone knows right away, this is a color that's no longer in production. This cloth is no longer available. But if you love the boat in this video, this boat's for sale at our Oxtung Lake store. Now they come standard with cherry handles, cherry thwarts on the inside. Many people get what we call the carbon tech package, which is the carbon handles and carbon thwarts. They also come standard with these adjustable kayak foot braces. I'm going to show you on another boat shortly the carbon foot bar, which is what I prefer. Now, many folks love our pack boats for this, our folding seat, which is very easy to adjust. I can very easy when I'm not using the boat, I'm driving, I'm transporting it, clip it in so it doesn't flop around. Then when I go to paddle it, I just clip it into the extra spare spot. Very easy to set it up. Our seat has adjustable lumbar support, very thick padding on the bottom, nice contour, really fits a variety of derrieres very comfortably. The straps on the side here work just like backpack straps, so it's very easy to adjust. The seat itself is a soft seat. Then when you paddle, it moves with you. So as you paddle, you don't have something rubbing on you. It's got real, a lot of softness. So many people tell us that this is by far the most comfortable seat in the pack boat industry. So, this is somewhat of a newer version. So let me show you a war veteran, folks. This is my personal boat. So this is a Cruiser 16.8. It's got lots of scratches on the bottom. I have paddled this a ton and oftentimes I intentionally not try to hit rocks, but if I hit them, I'll just push my way over because I really want to test the durability of our laminates. This particular one is a carbon fusion. It's got the carbon and negra on the insides. It's got the black carbon on the outside. You can also get it with the carbon and negra top on it. This one's got the sea blue bottom, which is very distinctive looking. It's got a real cool look to it. 
So I'd say about half the folks that get them get the all clear cloth and either Expedition Kevlar, Kevlar Fusion or Carbon Fusion. And about half choose a color, either the champagne, lime green, apple green, the red, the blue, they all look pretty cool. You have to remember though, the champagne boat color on the bottom, the champagne hull, will hide the scratches. Whereas the darker the color, the more you're gonna see the scratches. So some people don't care about them. I call them character marks and it means my boat's lived a good life. Everyone has different thoughts. So if you want it looking better over time, get the champagne color on the bottom. So let me show you guys how I like to outfit my boat. So this is exactly how I take this out when I go day tripping. I always take a carbon canoe paddle. This is a bent shaft. This is a bending branches black pearl. When I was younger, I used some 6'4". I used to use a 54 inch. Now I use a 50 inch. And the reason is I've had shoulder issues over the years with a shorter paddle. I can keep my shoulders lower and I don't roll my tendons, my ligaments and my muscle over my shoulders with every stroke. Now, if I'm out day tripping and I get to a portage, what I do with this is I tuck the blade against the side of the seat and then I'm gonna tie this and I use lashing. And the reason I do is it's what I use at camp for years. Lots of people use bungee cords, other things, they're quicker, they're faster. Now here is the paddle that I love to use. This is a Werner Caliste. And this is the 240 to 260 adjustable. Now bending branches makes an very beautiful adjustable ones. I use the Werner, I'm just used to it. So I can adjust both the length and the pitch of the paddle with just one motion like that. And it's so nice. I find that when I'm out paddling, sometimes I'd like to make the paddle a little bit longer to avoid getting as much water in the boat. So right while I'm paddling, it's so easy for me just to go like that and adjust it so quick. Now, when I get to the portages, what I do is I tuck this underneath and I'll tie this right on the side, just like the canoe paddle. And I've got into the habit, guys, of doing, doing this pretty quickly, especially in the spring if the bugs are biting you, you don't want to take time. My buddy Tom uses bungee cords and he laughs at me because he does it in half the time and he, he thinks he gets less bug bites, but I think the bugs like his skin better. I think he actually gets bit more. Then what I do with a kayak pedal, because it's long enough, I tie the back of it down also. Now you see the extra string in the back there? I just have that as a lashing cord. Sometimes when I'm at a campsite or some spot where we're stopping for lunch, I'll just tie it off. Okay, so right now, this is set up for the portages. I have a cherry detachable yoke. We also have a sassafras, which is a pound lighter. This one weighs about two and a half pounds. The sassafras yoke weighs about a pound and a half. And the carbon detachable yoke weighs a pound and a half. Any one works pretty well. So when I day trip, I take a pack with me, munchies, foods, maps, water bottle. So when I'm, when I'm ready now, I've got the paddles lashed in. All I do is pull right up to the boat and the canoe paddle isn't lashed at both ends, but it sits in real nicely here. So I've got a super comfortable position. While I'm walking on the trail, I can put one hand up, one hand down. The boat's balanced well. You can do no hands. Look, Ma, no hands. Lots of fun. 
So what do you say, folk? Let's go for a paddle. I've just finished the portage. Gonna come out to the end. Every portage should have a dock like this at the end of it. Actually, if it did, it wouldn't be the same. When I take the yoke off, I've gotten into the habit of just unscrewing both at the same time. Just makes it faster. And a real good place to put it while you're out paddling is just to unclip it and put it right next to the seat like this. I'm gonna show you folks both the kayak paddle and the canoe paddle today. So if I'm out on a good day trip, I always take a water bottle and I like putting the water bottle right next to me and I'm in the habit of putting my day pack right behind me so I can access it if I want to. When I get in and out of the boat, if I can, depending on the shoreline, I'll use the paddle for support. Now, there's not many portages in Algonquin, Boundary Waters, Killarney, Tomogamy, <clears throat> that have docks like this, but I'll take advantage of it today. So I'm just sitting right next to it, putting weight on the paddle. It's helping support me and I'm getting in the boat. So when you first get in your boat, hopefully you can hold on to the shore somewhere. Just get used to the feel of it. I really like paddling where I can move my feet around. So although the kayak foot braces come standard in this model, I really like the carbon foot bar because sometimes I wanna put my feet right in the middle. Sometimes I'll put one on the side, one in the middle, depending on how I'm feeling. When you position your foot brace or the carbon foot bar, it's good to keep your knees bent. Some people try to put their legs down real flat and low. It's not good for you. The more bend you have here, the more comfort you're gonna have when you're paddling. So I like to get used to the feel of the boat when I first get into it and encourage folks to do also. So let's push away now. And I'll show you a couple strokes that might help you out as you're paddling. So it's easy to get a boat to go straight. What people really wanna learn is correction strokes. And one that I'd like to show people right away is how to do a sculling stroke where I'm putting the edge of its upstream, I'm angling it up a little bit, and it allows me to pull the boat right sideways. Notice how I have my upper arm way up here. If I keep my lower arm out and my upper arm I keep close to my body, I don't have as much of an angle to pull the boat. When I put my upper arm up also, it allows me to have a better angle so I have more control when I'm doing this. So it's something that I'd like to get people to hack around with just to get used to at first. Another thing is sweep strokes. When you do a good sweep stroke, when you choke up on the paddle like this, you can really get a lot more angle to turn the boat. This is a physics thing. The further the blade is around, away from the boat, the more you can move it. And for example, I get people to put one hand on the end of the paddle and look how far out the blade is. So if you're in a situation where you really need to move the boat a lot, a hardcore kayaker that's really learned proper technique may scoff at this, but I find it very useful as a way of turning the boat around. So let's do a forward stroke for a bit. Ah, now I can angle, I can adjust the length. The longer I make the paddle, the less water I find drips in the boat. Okay, I'm gonna turn and then come back in. Again, I can turn quickly. If I put one hand on the top of the paddle, it gives me so much more leverage to turn the boat quickly. 
So I'm going to come right to you folks right now and show you the stroke that I like to use. And that's to keep my upper arm up and try to push it straight forward. Straight forward and really turn my shoulders and my body. The more you get your whole body into it, the more efficient your stroke comes. And notice how much I turn my shoulders. Get the weight of my body helping propel the boat forward. So there's different ways to control your boat in the water. One of them is that when you're paddling the boat, you control it once it's got speed going by leaning the boat a little bit. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So I'm gonna get a little bit of speed up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to lean to the outside of the turn. I'm gonna lean left and not adjust my stroke. And look what happens. And the more I lean, the more it turns. So the boat's turning to the opposite side that I'm leaning from. So what's really cool about that, guys, if you're out on a windy day and you feel like the wind's pushing you and you can't quite go where you want to without really adjusting your strokes, you can learn how to lean the boat to angle a little bit to get it to go the direction that you want to. And something that I really like to do when I'm paddling in a real windy, twisty stream, when I've got a big left-hand turn coming up, I'll lean the boat to the right. Really help me arc around the turn. And over time, you really learn how much to lean the boat, when to finish it, because the boat will keep, the momentum of it will keep turning for it for a bit. So you've got to bring the lean back down after a while. So super cool thing. The Cruiser Series, right from the 12.8, the 14.8, 15.8, and 16.8, perform so beautifully with these lean turns. You're absolutely going to love them. Now, this is the kayak paddle, of course. I would say 98% of the people that are using our pack boats primarily use a kayak paddle. And if that's what you're comfortable with, by all means, use it and use it forever. I grew up at a canoe camp, so I also just love the feeling, the motion of canoeing. So I use a straight shaft paddle when I paddle with the prospectors or the Kiwadens. With the cruisers, I really like using a bench shaft paddle. And the whole idea of a bench shaft paddle is that it allows you to get the blade more perpendicular to the water. So you're getting more of your power and hence your efficiency going straight forward. If you're using a straight shaft paddle at a relaxed cruising pace, it's not bad. You'll actually pull water up for part of your stroke, which will pull the boat down a little bit. And if you're just cruising or light touring, there's nothing wrong with that. I use a bench shaft paddle and a straight shaft paddle. I would actually say I use a straight shaft paddle for tripping more than a bench shaft. So now the bench shaft paddle stroke, very similar to the kayak stroke. Really want to rotate my shoulders. Now with this, you switch sides every now and then. Because the blade is so short, it's really easy to do so. When I really get cruising, I can get five, six strokes to a side. The lean turns. I can do the same lean turn I just showed you with the kayak paddle. So look how quickly I can turn this. And then also, I find a short bench shaft canoe paddle so easy to do cross draws and other correction stroke. I can just quickly put it over, stick it, turn the boat. So let's do the stroke again. Really reach out. Really turn your shoulders. Try to keep your arms as straight as you can with this stroke. And look at the glide of this boat. Look how it just keeps moving with very little disturbance of the water and it's an extremely efficient boat to paddle. 
I'll do another good turn here. So the more you lean it over when you're doing these strokes, when you've got speed going, the quicker the turn will be. And I don't, I don't want people to try to lean it way over when they first start this. Slowly learn how to do it. But it's one of the beauties of a David Yost design. The designs have a little bit of play to them, but they're really designed to lean way over on the side without capsizing. And the David Yost designs are extremely seaworthy. They've got a lot of versatility. And what we really like about them is they give you tremendous room as you grow your skills to get more and more out of the boat. So the Cruiser 16.8. I used to marathon canoe race. I like the speed and efficiency of it. Just I can go from point A to point B very efficiently. I can see more, hear more birds, see more beavers, see the loons more. But at the same time, so many people are getting these boats for recreational paddling. I often now will have a parent get one and put one child behind them, one child in front have a dog and a child with them, and or lots of gear. It's just, it's a longer solo boat that just has absolutely ton of stability. And it's just so comfortable in the water with this seating system, Trey Magnifique. Everyone perhaps needs more than one boat and the Cruiser 16A could likely be one of them. Cheers.